right, all right, I'm coming. Confounded middle of the night. What is it, Carlo? Monte Cristo, I must see. Who are you, sir? I must see the Count. But who are you? It's a matter. I tell you, the Count is retired. It's a matter. Sir, the Count is retired. Monte Cristo. Roland. I apologize, Monsieur. I know it's late. Why, you look as if the very devil were at your heels. What brings you here at this hour and after so many years? Monsieur, the new railway engine, it's going to be blown up on its trial run at dawn. I knew of no one else I could come to. You must stop them. Where did you get this information? I have it on the best authority. You must believe me. Listen, since I saw you last, I have been employed by... After them! Roland. Roland, tell me, who's going to blow up the train? Here. Here is... More. Dead? Yes. Read this. Explosion of the first French steam locomotive and its trial run at five o'clock this morning. The test run hasn't started and yet this note speaks of the explosion as though it had already happened. Someone is planning to blow up the train. It won't. Shouldn't we get the police? Well, there's no time. The note says at five o'clock. It's one o'clock now. We have four hours left. Carlo, saddle the fastest horses. Yes. Jacopo, don't let anyone enter while we are gone. What happened? The train. Everything was so peaceful. And then suddenly, out of the blue... It exploded? Oh, it was horrible. All those people, so happy, so excited. And then... I must go for help. Our help will be needed, too. people, Edmond. What a terrible tragedy. Who would want to wreck the train? A question I intend to ask Gerard. The Premier of France? It was Gerard who fathered the plan for this railroad. But first, shouldn't we notify the police of Roland's death? Whoever is responsible for Roland's murder is responsible for this. We may be able to use Roland's death as a weapon against the murderer. Let's see how the Premier will take the news of this disaster. It is the end of everything, Elise. The railroad, my career, the financial security of France. Surely you're exaggerating. 
You cannot lose everything you fought for simply because of this unfortunate accident. Now you're wrong, my dear. In a few hours, the Chamber of Deputies will convene. It will ring with the cries of Gerard's folly. My cabinet will be overthrown, and I'll be out of office. But, John, that's not what is really troubling you, is it? No. The life savings of thousands of Frenchmen are invested in that railroad. When this news reaches the public, there'll be a panic on the stock exchange. Their savings will be wiped out. Sir, the Duke of Cordoba is here by your request. Show him in, please. You sent for him? Yes. But Cordot has been the leader of the opposition. His, his newspapers have opposed you from the very beginning. The Duke of Cordot. Madame, Your Excellency, I trust this disastrous accident proves the madness of your railroad plan. I have not asked you here to discuss the past. The future. The future? You have no future. Not mine. That of our country. Will you be seated? Just what have you in mind? Your help in preventing financial disaster. Then you realize the consequences of your folly on the stock market. There need be no consequences if you help. Precisely what do you think I can do? Lend your support to the continuation of the railroad. I'm afraid not. I'm humbling myself before you, Cordo. Something I've never done with any man before. I beg of you, for the sake of our country, its people. Will you do as I ask? Sir, I too beg of you, please help. I'm afraid that you and the railway and the railway shares will all have to go down to destruction together. The Count of Monte Cristo to see you, sir. Show him in. Monte Cristo, one of your loyal supporters in Gerard's folly, was he not? Well, there's no need to witness a scene of commiseration between you both. I, I'll say my farewells. Madame, Your Excellency. Monte Cristo. Monsieur Cordeau. Madame. Your Excellency. I gather Cordeau is most pleased by the events of this morning. And I was foolish enough to hope that he might help. I shall realize that this accident played directly into his hands. The destruction of the train was no accident, Your Excellency. No accident? The train was deliberately blown up. An explosion of some kind. I was warned it was going to happen four hours before it occurred. Can you prove this, Edmund? In time, I hope to, yes. Time? There is no time. The Chamber of Deputies convenes in a few hours. They'll vote me out. Not if you admit you were wrong. What will that accomplish, Edmond? They may still retain your husband as premier. And the country needs you. But they'll demand the end of the railroad. The result will be the same. Destruction of the market. Allow me to worry about that. Retain your position while I get the proof. But the news will be known when the exchange opens at noon. By that time, it will already be too late. I would not lose hope so quickly, madame. Your Excellency. See, Julian, already the railway stock is feeling the effects of the accident this morning. Then your advice? Sell. Sell as much and as fast as you can. There are millions to be made by selling now and buying back when the low point is reached. This you could do. I didn't know the Count was interested in the railway project. Well, what if he is? Sell, my friend, and let your profits comfort you. I tell you, Count, this will be a black day for France. A black day. You may be wrong, Villette. Villette is quite right, you know. You don't seem concerned by the falling market, Cordeaux. My dear Christo, as a journalist, I've learned to be objective. Your attention. Your attention, please. An announcement. And undoubtedly an important one to interrupt trading at this time of day. 
An important announcement from the Chamber of Deputies. A vote of confidence for His Excellency the Premier. The present cabinet will continue. The vote was based on the bill concerning the National Railway of France. In view of the unfortunate accident this morning, the Premier feels that it would not be possible for the government to support the railway at this time. Congratulations. Monsieur, allow me to sell your railway shares as quickly as possible. No, Villette, I want you to buy every share offered. To buy? Yes, my friend. But this is madness, monsieur. Look what's happened to the stock since the announcement was made. 10,000 railway shares to sell. 10,000 to sell at five below the market price. There. You may start by buying 10,000. Do you know how much money you'll need to buy every share that's offered for sale? It will take millions. I shall buy the entire issue if necessary to keep the price up. Now, get me the 10,000. As you wish, Monsieur Le Comte. Jacopo and I have taken care of Roland's body. Any visitors? None. The only question of time. We have 25,000 offered at 15 points below the last shares. What do you wish me to do now? Buy. But I beg of you. You cannot possibly. I say buy, Villette. Edmond, you're buying railway shares? I am. But the market's falling to pieces. Why throw your money away? To gain time to force someone into making a move and to eventually, in some small way, avenge those poor souls that died aboard the train this morning. The market's dropped another 25 points. Bye. 60,000 to 10 below the market. Bye. Seven thousand shares. Buy. Ten thousand shares. Buy. 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 He's doing it. Madman is doing it. He can't possibly succeed. He is succeeding. The millions he's thrown into the market have already brought the fall to a standstill. Well, he can't go on, not even his fortune can be that great. How do you know? If he continues this way, restores confidence in the railway, and we're the one to lose the fortune, not he. Thank heaven. Trading is over for this day. But tomorrow? What's going to happen when the exchange opens tomorrow? Don't worry. When the exchange opens tomorrow, I assure you the Count of Monte Cristo will not be here. This is for the courier who's riding to Lyon. He is to give it to my banker there. And this is for my shipping house in Marseille. Tell them to ride like the wind, Jacopo. This money is needed to support the stock. Edmond, this is sheer insanity. There is no end to this bottomless well into which you're dropping your millions. Uh, if you throw enough debris down the well, you're bound to stop it up. Debris? You're talking about millions in gold. And eventually it will lead us to the one who sabotaged the train. But how is this going to lead us to him? There are two men out there in the night, Carlo. Two men who murdered Roland and the same men who attacked us on the road. And we are going to find them tonight. Two men. Two murderous cutthroats among all the people of France? And we're going to find them tonight? Exactly, my friend. You are the Count of Monte Cristo? At your service. My name is Duval. Ah, the Prefect of Police. That is quite correct. I hereby place you under arrest. On what charges? Murder. And the victim? A certain Monsieur Roland. May I ask upon what evidence you're making this charge? The body of Roland, which was found buried on your grounds. Who was it that gave you this information? The evidence makes further discussion needless. Let us go. No, wait. Whoever sent you here is the real killer of Roland. We are wasting time. Who was it? Was it the uh, Duke of Cordoba? That is a very grave accusation. No graver than the one you're making against me. 
But you have only circumstantial evidence. I have something more nearly approaching the truth. No weapons. Only this. And its meaning? The fragment of that note was brought to me by Roland early this morning. To be exact, at one o'clock. At one? But this says the train has already exploded. And that did not occur until five o'clock this morning. Precisely. And here's Godot's newspaper. Compare the language with that message. It is identical. If Cordo knew four hours before that the train would be blown up, only he can be the guilty one. I still do not regard this as proof. You will come with me, monsieur. On your feet, gentlemen. My apologies, but I have work to do tonight. Bind and gag them. First you gamble away your fortune. Now the entire police force of France is searching for us. I have gambled away nothing, Carlo. And the police will be able to find me at the stock exchange in the morning. At the exchange? All we must do is find proof of Coteau's guilt tonight. How? Oh, by finding those two phantom men who attacked us? Yes, but we are not going to find them. Coteau is going to find them for us. Do you realize, Edmond, what it would mean if you were wrong about Cordeaux? I do. But the Duke of Cordeaux, the power of his newspaper, his friends in court and in the Chamber of Deputies. It is not my ruin I am thinking of, Edmond, believe me. But if you are wrong about Cordeaux, Nothing can prevent you from being destroyed. Allow me to borrow a phrase from you, Your Excellency. It is not my ruin I'm thinking of. I know. It could be the vindication of all the people in France who believed in that railroad, as we believed. Then forget me and think of them. I'll do exactly as you wish. I was sure you would. Preposterous. You can't mean you really believe the word of a murderer of this Monte Cristo. I didn't come here to tell you that I believed him. Only to tell you what he said to me. That he has proof of my guilt as a murderer? Exactly. He's going to produce two assassins in the Chamber of Deputies in the morning. Two men who will claim that you hired them to kill a newspaper clerk by the name of Roland. And you came here to accuse me? Not to accuse, to warn you. I want no part of any conspiracy with Monte Cristo. I have my name and my family to protect. Thank you, Your Excellency. I shall remember that. Open. You see, my friends, I was right. Cordeaux is going to locate these two men for us. You will stop right there, Monte Cristo. Oh, so does you, Monsieur Le Duc. Were you expecting someone else? Who's there to expect down here? People like us, the police, and people like you who need us. Some wine, sir? There's a fourth category you neglected to mention, my friend. So? People like me who no longer need nor trust people like you. Get out your pistol and put it on the table. Now you. Up. 
Over against the wall. Why are you doing this to us? Move! So, you are going to sell me out to the Count of Monte Cristo? No. You are lying. I swear by whatever I hold holy, we never heard of this man. That's right. And if you're telling me the truth, then why did the Premier... Strange place and strange company. But a newspaper's have a share of your exalted stature. You know, I wonder you dare to expose yourself even here, Monte Cristo. A murderer. Half the police of France on your trail. Well, not half the police. Only the prefect and some of his men. Ah. Oh. Pleasure to see you, Monsieur le Prefect. There's the man you're looking for. Your Excellency, you ordered me to come here to delay the arrest of the Count of Monte Cristo. I am here. I should now like to hear the proof you said you would offer. Proof concerning what? Your connection with the blowing up of the train. The fortune that you and your friends were planning to make on the stock market. And your presence here with the same two men who attacked us and murdered Roland. You actually believe all this remarkable nonsense? An accusation has been made. Would you care to answer it? There's nothing to answer. I beg to differ. One explanation would help. And that is how your paper carried a full account of the train explosion before I returned from the scene. That's the business of a newspaper, to print the news as rapidly as possible. In this case, a little too rapidly. How did your paper receive that news? From the same sources we always receive our dispatches, the telegraphic semaphore. I'll wager it's considerably faster than your horse. Agreed. But unfortunately for you, the explosion destroyed the only semaphore within kilometers of the wreck. It was impossible to use it. Get back, all of you! Thank you, monsieur. So it was an accident that betrayed me. Not you, Monte Cristo, but the destruction of a telegraphic semaphore. You could have saved yourself a good deal of trouble, Count, if you had told me of the semaphore sooner. That would have been impossible, I'm afraid. You see, I invented that little incident right here and now. please. May we have your attention? We are honored this morning by the presence of His Excellency, the Premier, Monsieur Girard. My fellow countrymen, a recent accident almost shook the very foundation of this exchange. Your government was dismayed to see such a lack of trust during a temporary emergency. Fortunately, it was only temporary, and it is therefore that now with great joy that I can tell you, the nation, the world, that the railway bill will be signed today. May our country prosper. Once again, I have reason to thank you. Not me, but a man who gave his life to save his country. A loyal and courageous printer's clerk by the name of Roland.